Hi everybody and welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine. I'm Mark and I've been teaching people how to scuba dive for well over 10 years now. So you'll probably recognize me from the Simply Scuba channel and even my own channel, Safe Diving. For this video series, I'm going to be going back to the basics of scuba diving so that if you're just starting out or even if you're just feeling a little bit rusty, you can dive back in fresh in the knowledge in the scuba diving basics. If you enjoyed this video and find it useful, then don't forget to like and share it online so that your diving friends can see it as well and brush up on their skills. If you have any comments, questions, queries or even corrections at any part of the video then let us know down in the comments below and we or even our community will help you out. So let's get into it. Everybody, in this video I'm going to be taking a comprehensive look at regulator fittings and tank valves because it's not a universal thing and you have quite a few options when it comes to connections. So when it comes to regulators you usually have two options when it comes to fittings on your brand new regulator. When you're buying a set of regulators you will usually have the choice between A clamp or DIN. And the only real difference between these regulators is going to be how they attach to the tank or cylinder valve. But there are some considerations when choosing one or the other. But first of all, let's take a closer look at tank valves themselves so that you can better identify which is which and which regulator can fit which. There are actually about five or six different types of tank valves around today in modern diving, although you'll only really see one, maybe two of them the most. So this one up here is called an A-clamp tank valve. And as you can see, it has a ceiling O-ring facing you, uh, an outlet for the air, and that's about it. On these tanks, you can only fit a regulator with A-clamp fitting. Um, these are becoming more and more rare with newer valves replacing them. For example, this is a modern 232 bar tank valve, and this is probably what will be fitted to a brand new tank. When it's in this state, it can be fitted with an A-clamp regulator because it has this O-ring here, but you can also remove this section that we affectionately call a donut or an insert with an 8mm Allen key. Some require a slightly different sized Allen key, but most have settled on 8mm now. So with this donut removed, you can now attach a DIN regulator to this valve, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. The third type is a 300 bar tank valve like this one, and as you can see here, it has a longer valve, so it has more screw thread. This means that it can go to a much higher pressure, but means that only 300 bar DIN regulators can be fitted to it. There will be no adapter or a donut to be, that will allow you to fit an A-clamp regulator, because A-clamp regs can only go up to 232 bar. Other tank valves are used for diving, but these are usually quite specialized and you'll probably won't see these too often, but it's important that you can tell the difference. So the first one is a M26 DIN valve, and these are made for nitrox in certain areas around the world. These will have a slightly larger screw thread than a standard DIN, so you can only fit an oxygen cleaned regulator or your DIN regulator doesn't fit nicely into it, check around the uh, kind of neck of the valve and it'll probably have an M26 stamped into it, which means you have to use a special regulator. This is an oxygen valve made for tanks that hold pure oxygen. And as you can see, it, they require a very special fitting, so there's little chance that you can fit any old regulator to dive with it. And then you have some specialist tank valves like Y, K, and modular valves, but these will be much the same as the first and the second valves, just with two fittings or for two regulators or some other kind of fitting. Okay, now onto the regulators themselves. A-clamp is the older of the two fittings and can have a few different names. Some divers call it yoke or even international, but A-clamp regulators will have a looped section on it like this. So this section loops over the tank valve and then this screw kind of locks it down into position. 
The sealing surface here on your regulator will kind of seal against an O-ring on the tank valve and that's what's going to create that seal uh, and seal that air pressure from leaking out. These regulators will have a working pressure of 230, 232 bar and will often see that kind of stamped on it or laser etched somewhere like this. So let's take a closer look at how you properly attach and remove an A-clamp regulator from a cylinder. Okay, so for a clamp, so the first thing is, is you want to take a look at your cylinder valve and make sure that you can see an O-ring on it. Now you can't see one on this because it's currently in DIN configuration. So what you need to do is fit a donut or an insert. So this will have two different ends. So it'll have an O-ring on either end and, um, and you want this one. You can see how it's kind of flattened around this end and then the rest is screw thread. So, uh, so this end is going to go into the, um, the valve itself on the cylinder and you want to make sure that that's nice and square. If you meet any kind of resistance at all it might be that it's at a slight angle and you're crossing the threads so uh, this should go in with, uh, with no effort whatsoever. Uh, if you want to make life a bit easier just use an 8mm allen key and, uh, and that just goes in finger tight. You don't have to wrench it in um, because the pressure does most of the work for you. If you do that too much and you over tighten it, um, then chances are you might never get that out. So um, yeah, everything is kind of finger tight. You don't have to sort of wrench anything down. So now we can see our O-ring and uh, it's nice and clean. If it looks a little bit ropey, then uh, you can always change that out. Just get a uh, sort of a dental pick or something just to get that out and replace it. Um, you wanna make sure that it's nice and clean and there's no kind of threads that you can see. If a, uh, an O-ring is going a bit thready, it's, uh, it's just getting a bit old and then air can start leaking out. So now on to our, um, our A-clamp regulator. Um, now this is actually a DIN regulator but with an A-clamp adapter fitted on it. This is all I had to hand. Um, now the first thing you want to do is take out your, um, your dust cap. So dust caps are these little guys that kind of sit in that opening and uh, yeah, as the name suggests, it prevents dust and contaminants from getting in. And you're gonna unscrew this wheel section and, uh, and that retracts this kind of bolt here. So I like to do it pretty much all the way, just to make life a lot easier when you're um, going to fit it to your um, uh, to your actual valve. Get that out of the way, you don't need that. And then this is our sealing surface. This is what's gonna seal against that black O-ring. And, um, and then when you're actually fitting it, you wanna make sure that it goes on nice and square. Um, plenty of space in the back. Make sure that that sealing surface is sealing inside of that tank valve. And then when you're um, confident that it's nice and flat, just again, very gently do up that, um, that screw thread until the A-clamp clamps over that valve. And again, just finger tight. You don't have to wrench it down if you have to use your entire hand to really tighten it up, that's too much. Just a couple of fingers because again, the pressure is doing most of the work. Now remember, I probably should have said this first to be honest, but uh, regulators usually go over your right hand shoulder and then everything else goes over the left. So make sure that it's going on in the right direction, otherwise your regs are gonna come out your left side. Uh, so regulators are usually over your right hand shoulder. And then once that's in position, with your tank valve handle, uh, you wanna open this really slowly because if you just wrench that open, then it can damage your regulators and um, it's not really what they're made for, that sudden whoosh of gas. So the best way to do it is just to open it a teeny tiny little bit and, um, and then once you hear that kind of quick whoosh of gas, then you can open it all the way open and that allows for plenty of airflow. When you're then taking it off, close it all the way, depressurize the regulator. That's what most people forget to do. Um, even after you've closed that tank valve, there's still pressure inside the regulator and inside all the hoses. So just press the purge button on your second stage and that'll uh, sort of equalize that pressure out. So then grab hold of your first stage so it doesn't go anywhere and then just gently undo that screw. And again, I like to do it all the way so it's got plenty of space and then lift it away. And at this point, I find a lot of people on dive boats, they like to open that cylinder valve out to um, try and sort of push any water away. 
I'm not a fan of that, mainly because it's really loud and uh, it just freaks me out whenever I hear a loud rush of gas on a dive deck. And two, the one thing that you're trying to prevent water getting into your first stage, you're actually blowing water in that direction. So it's just a bad idea. Um, if anything, just a microfiber towel, um, just over that opening, just to prevent anything from going in. Make sure that your, um, your dust cap is nice and dry. Put that back in position as quickly as possible and then screw that down so that no contaminants can get into the, uh, the working parts of your, um, of your first stage. And, um, and that's it. That's basically how you attach and then remove an A-clamp regulator. DIN is your alternative and comes in two varieties, 300 bar or 232, although 232 is very rare for DIN. DIN stands for Deutsch Institut für Normung and will look like a screw fitting kind of like this. Unlike the A-clamp, DIN has a sealing o-ring on your regulator, not on the tank valve. And the screw attachment traps that o-ring on the inside of that tank valve so it can go to much higher pressures than A-clamp. Unfortunately, because DIN is the newer of the two fittings, it still hasn't integrated all over the world just yet and older tank valves may not be able to fit DIN regulators. You can of course get your an A-clamp adapter like what's fitted in this regulator um, if you're traveling and don't know what kind of valves you will be using. So let's take a quick look at how to properly attach and remove a DIN regulator. And now for your DIN regulator. So DIN regulators, they have their own O-ring on them. Um, if I remove the dust cap, you can see that just here. This one is kind of colorless. Um, but the color doesn't really matter anymore. They come in a whole range of different colors. Black is pretty much the standards, but you can get some um, some different colored ones. And, um, and that means is that you don't need an O-ring in your tank valve. So this one, as you can see, it has an O-ring. Uh, it's got an insert fitted. So what we need to do is remove that insert or that donut. So uh, just take that out with an eight mil Allen key and just keep that to one side. And now we're pretty much ready for DIN. Just kind of like take a look on the inside of that valve, uh, make sure the screw threads are nice and neat. There's no, um, no buildup of anything nasty on the inside. Um, take your, uh, your first stage, as with the A-clamp, make sure that the regulator hoses are going in the right direction first. Take off that, um, that dust valve, just kind of keep that to one side. And then what we're doing is we're going O-ring first and you wanna make sure that that goes in as straight as possible. Now, the same with your, um, your A-clamp, there should be no resistance in this. It might squeal a bit, they're, um, they're quite noisy, but um, yeah, it should never require any more than two fingers to put it all the way in. If you meet any kind of resistance in the first couple of turns, then back off, take it off, and then try again, because chances are it's at a ever so slight angle, and those screw threads are cross-threading again, so you don't want to do that. That can damage your first stage, it can damage the valve. Um, so yeah, any more resistance than, um, than sort of finger tight, and, um, and it might be in the wrong way. Once it's gone in uh, about three or three or four turns at least, if you then meet resistance, that's it. So this is a 300 bar DIN, screwing into a 232 valve, so that's fine. And, um, and yeah, as with a clamp, just kind of finger tight because the pressure does most of the work for you. And then it's exactly the same with the cylinder valve. Just open it a little bit, let the whole system pressurize gently, and then you can open it all the way. When you're done with it, make sure it's nice and closed. You don't have to tighten that too much neither. This is another valve that a lot of people damage by screwing it too tight. Um, again, it's just finger tight will do the, uh, the work. Depressurize everything, press that purge button or an inflate button on your BCD to depressurize the regulator. And then it's just the opposite, you're unscrewing it. So get this DIN wheel and just unscrew that. And eventually it will just come through. Same as before, make sure there's no moisture uh, sort of around here, clean out that dust cap, uh, sort of clean any water out of that first, and then replace that as quickly as you can. Now, dust caps are not watertight, so you can't now dunk this in, the, um, uh, in a water bath or something. 
The name dust cap is exactly that. It stops dust from getting in, but it won't keep water out if it's submerged like this. So if you are washing your regulators, try and do it whilst they're pressurized. That way water can't get into the working parts. Or at worst, try and use your thumb over the opening uh, so you can get a, a watertight seal for a quick kind of splash around. But um, yeah, don't rely on your dust cap to keep water out whilst your regulator is submerged. So there are your two options of regulator and how to fit them properly. One big question that I often get asked is if you can fit a 300 bar DIN regulator to a 232 bar tank valve. And yes, that's perfectly fine. You'll just have a little bit of exposed screw thread, but it'll seal in both a 232 bar valve and a 300 bar valve. Personally, I prefer DIN because it's just safer. DIN valves trap that O-ring inside of the valve and it is virtually impossible for that o-ring to slip and extrude whereas on an a-clamp regulator because your o-ring is right here um, just kind of trapped the high pressure inside combined with the hit of jumping into the water can cause that o-ring to move slightly and air to leak out so hopefully that answered all of your questions on regulators and tank fittings but if you do have any other questions please feel free to let me know down in the comments below Okay, so now you're a bit savvier with your scuba diving basics. Don't forget to subscribe to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel to stay up to date with the latest scuba diving news and advice, and don't forget to put your comments down below in the comments. Thank you for watching, and of course, safe diving.